morning and welcome to virtual worship with Lutheran Church of the Palms. I'm Pastor Kelly. Thank you for joining me for worship this morning. I continue to be thankful for the welcoming emails and cards during this time where we are getting to know each other, but we can't do that in a traditional way. Um, keep an eye out for more opportunities to meet virtually so that we can continue to get to know each other better. For now, let us worship our risen Lord together. Welcome to worship. begin worship with the confession and forgiveness found on page three of your bulletin blessed be the holy trinity one god whose steadfast love is everlasting whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation amen trusting in the mercy of god let us confess our sin Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you, for he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats, but my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 138 to be read responsively. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and forgiveness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called you, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, 
Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from our God who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. So this summer of 2020 has been a strange one. We continue in this space of pandemic and staying home a lot more than normal. I spent much of my summer as I was packing and moving, watching through the entire Marvel Universe catalog of movies. And let's be honest, they follow pretty closely to a pattern. And there's this one trope from superhero movies that we see pretty often. It usually happens in the second to last scene of the movie. The viewer thinks that maybe this time the villain has won. A beloved character has their back up against the wall or has already fallen. Hope is at its lowest. And then another hero steps up, sacrificing themselves for the good of the world. While not all Marvel, we've seen it over and over in superhero movies. Wolverine, Jean, Tony Stark, Obi-Wan, Harry Potter's parents, Superman's parents, Green Arrow. Sometimes that's the end. Often it's not. Our culture is inundated with books and movies about mutant-type creatures, those whose blood heals. There are best-selling books about vampires walking in the world whose blood speeds healing of us poor, weak humans. All of the superhero movies that have become so popular for the last couple of years often show the hero sacrificing for others. Books, movies, TV, about those who sacrifice themselves for our common good have been, and likely always will be, a popular common theme. That sacrifice to something greater when some bigger villain is trying to take over the world, it's with these images of sacrifice that we move into the writing of Apostle Paul and the sacrifice he challenges us to become today. Now, the section of scripture Paul writes here is a movement away from the theological understanding of the Christian faith. He just spent 12 chapters writing his letter to the Romans about that part before this. So I definitely recommend you read that if you haven't already. But now today we move to the kind of so what part of the letter. It's the movement towards practical Christian living, what it means to live under the lordship of Jesus Christ what it means to live our lives if we confess that we are followers of Jesus. The apostle says here that the clearest image he wishes to use as the description of the Christian life is the act of sacrifice, the presenting of life to God, putting ourselves on the altar as the sacrifice in contrast to the animal sacrifices that were part of the religious worship history previous to this. Now that is a very lofty view of human life. I think most of us think of ourselves as being too low, or too wicked, or too wrong, or too unworthy, too much of a sinner, or one who doesn't feel comfortable talking about their faith because what if I answer the question wrong, or what if I don't know the right words? But Paul pauses and he emphasizes our gifts to God as being able to give our best. Because we are enough of a sacrifice. We are more than enough to God. And then he pauses again and writes, Just in case we were getting a little too full of ourselves, I bid you not to think more highly of yourselves than you ought to think. 
Notice he doesn't say what that is or how high we ought to think of ourselves. Paul seems to be saying not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think, but at the same time to think of ourselves as gifted. The way the whole church will benefit is to let everyone exercise their gift. Yet how in the world can we offer ourselves as spiritual sacrifices if we do not understand the gifts we offer? I I once heard someone say that the problem with a living sacrifice is that it always tries to climb off the altar. Now, while this is meant to be like a kitschy statement, there's definitely some theolo- something theological profound, truthfully, in that we should be crawling off the altar and going into the world, trying to use our gifts in the world. And in order to appreciate the gifts fully, there must be an understanding of our opinion of ourselves. In our culture, we talk about self-image or self-confidence. Paul says that we are to think of ourselves as gifted. There seems to be three avenues to travel in response to self-image. One is pride, thinking too highly of ourselves. The second avenue is low self-esteem, thinking less than we should of ourselves. And the last avenue is a healthy self-image, being able to offer ourselves to God as the right kind of sacrifice, knowing our gifts and how that can be used in God's kingdom. If we take time to look at the first two of the three avenues, we find that they are deadly and will bring personal and spiritual harm. The pride or arrogance in self or religion is hurtful, not only to us, but to others. Most of the problems that Jesus dealt with had to do with religious arrogance. When we encounter the Pharisees, the questions were not of well-being of another person, but some law that may have been broken. When Jesus was with people on the outside of Jewish purity, these religious people complained that he was eating with sinners, and Jesus replied that he came to save sinners, not to save the saved. And this attitude is not found only in Jesus' day. I have certainly known proclaimed Christians with this attitude, and I'd be willing to bet that you probably have known some in your life as well. It was a group who professed to have perfect and complete knowledge of the truth, and who looked with disdain on anyone who was different or believed differently. To claim to speak only absolute truth is to be self-deceived, guilty of both arrogance and foolishness, This problem is a very real problem, and Paul's words here would certainly be a big help. Don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but do think of yourselves as gifted. Because, Paul goes on, we are all members of the body. We are the hands and the feet of the body of Christ, so So where do your gifts fit in? Are you a hand or a foot, an ear, a nose? All are gifted. All have been given the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be a better functioning community of Christ. No one was given their gifts in a vacuum. They were meant to be used. And you may know what your gifts are right now, but you know what? You might not. And that's where the body of Christ comes in. When you look around at your brothers and sisters in Christ, do you see gifts that our community can use? Gifts of the body of Christ? Gifts that the body of Christ can use? Tell them. Tell them that you see in them the ability to teach. Tell them that you see in them the ability to beautify a worship space. Tell them you see in them their gift of using technology to do something new. Tell them that you see in them a creativity that changes the world and connects others during this time. 
Tell them that you see in them a love of helping those who cannot help themselves. Tell them you see in them the gift of leading, of giving, of compassion, of cheer and joy. Because as much as we are called to be a living sacrifice, crawling off that altar every single Sunday, being the body of Christ in the world, we are also called to help others recognize and lift up the spirit of given gifts that they have as well. Who do you say that I am? Jesus says in the gospel reading we heard today. You are the Messiah. And we are the body. We are the ones called to be the body of Christ, working in the world, doing God's work with our hands today and every day. So let's get to work. Lift up our gifts. Lift up others' gifts. And every Sunday, come and be fed with the word of Christ. Share what you are hearing. Be recharged and renewed and refreshed to go and do God's extraordinary work in these not-so-ordinary times. Bring everyone you know with you and then be a living sacrifice and climb off the altar. Amen.
In Christ you have heard the word of faith, the gospel of salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs that the spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators, and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purpose in the governance of peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us. Deliver us and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved, in trouble or adversity or sick and in need of care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into this community in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we are hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to their, our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. My Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to receive you in our soul. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as if you are already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. And now receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, Bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.